I fooled myself into believing that it hadn't affected me and it's only after the breakup that I realized how much it had. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. Today I wanted to talk about something very personal. As if everything I talked about before wasn't personal enough. But before I start, if addiction is a sensitive topic for you, then I would suggest maybe clicking out of the video. I don't want to upset or trigger anyone. So if you're not comfortable to hear someone else's story, then I don't want you to force yourself and just respect your own limit. So why am I making a video about this? If you watched my first video on my breakup, you probably heard this. I was scared that he would be so heartbroken that he would drink a lot. I didn't realize why I was scared about that until I started preparing for this video right now. After my breakup, I realized how much my childhood affected and is still affecting me. So number one, I'm a people pleaser. It shouldn't be a shock if you watch my previous video, but this is pretty much why. <laughs> As a child, I had to play quietly in my room and make sure to not wake up my dad because my dad would get upset. He was never violent, but just seeing him mad was scary. Since he was often sleeping during the day, we couldn't make too much noise and just be kids at home. My mom was also going through a lot because of my dad, so I was a good child. As to not trouble her. Basically, I learned to care for my parents' needs to keep the peace at home. Number two, I have poor boundaries. I didn't really learn to say no when I didn't want to do something. I didn't learn to ask for my needs to be met. I learned that my needs weren't as important as others. So as an adult, this is a recurring theme. I don't mind giving a lot to people I care about, but some of them do take advantage of it. Number three, it messed up my relationship with my mom. As a child, I felt like I had to compensate for my father. This made my mom rely a lot on my sister and I. At night, she would often come sleep in my room because my room was next to theirs and because she didn't want to sleep next to my drunk dad. Also, most of our family didn't know or didn't want to believe what was happening in our home. So my mom would confine in my sister and I. As an adult, my mom still relies heavily on us and we're struggling to have a healthy relationship. Number four, I have trouble asking for help. Because my parents weren't really available, I had to take care of myself. So I learned to not ask for help and just do it myself. But doing everything yourself sometimes makes it hard. And not being able to ask for help is a struggle. <laughs> I'm, learning to, I'm learning to ask for help now. I try to do it more, but it's still difficult. I don't like to ask for help because I feel like it's a burden on the other person and I don't want I don't want to be a burden to anyone. Number five, I have a bad relationship with money. My dad would steal money from us to go buy alcohol. So at some point, my mom started bringing all of our wallets to her job. But one day, someone stole our wallets. My parents also didn't have the means 
to save money because my dad was in and out of work and my mom was basically the sole breadwinner. I grew up not scared of money but kind of resenting it. I'm trying to change this mindset and see money just as an object, neither good nor bad. Number six, I'm scared to give away my heart. The first man I've ever loved broke my trust and hurt me, so you know. If that doesn't scare you from giving your heart ever again, then I don't know what will. <laughs> As a child, I learned that giving your heart to someone could lead to a lot of pain. It took me 23 years to finally give it to someone because I was scared. Number seven, when my partner drinks, it makes me uneasy. When I was with my ex, I didn't mind when he drank, only when he drank too much or too often. I'm extremely scared to repeat what happened to me in the past. I don't want to have to go through this again and I don't want my future children to have to go through this. I remember one time where my ex drank a lot and he was passed out and I started crying and I wanted to leave him right then and there. I like to believe that everything comes with good. First, I rarely drink. I don't know if it's because of my past or because I'm getting older, <laughs> but, but I develop an alcohol intolerance. Whenever I drink alcohol, my nose gets really stuffy. I already have a, sep a deviated septum, so it's already not pleasant. <laughs> so when I drink alcohol, it gets really stuffy. So it's kind of hard to breathe through my nose and it wrecks my digestion. Because of that, I only drink once or twice a year and not a lot. The second good thing I think came out of this is I'm more empathic. I think I can understand people's emotion well. Because I want to make everyone happy, I think I tend to be more aware of others' feelings. I'm a shy person around new people, but if, for example, we have a new co-worker, I know they're less comfortable than I am, so I tend to try to suppress my shyness and try to make them more comfortable. The last thing is that I'm independent. I can do a lot of things on my own. If there's a problem with something, I usually go online and try to figure it out. I've learned a lot of things this way. Also in my everyday bag, I carry a lot of things just in case. I have everything I need if something happens. I know I can rely on myself. There were times where I even questioned whether it truly happened to me or not. But my emotional scars tell me it did. If you or someone you know struggles with addiction, there's help available to you. If you are the child of an addict, I hope you know that you're not alone that you don't need to go through this alone and that things do get better. Hope that this video helped you somehow. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!